Welcome back to Animal of the Week and Shark Week. As it is Shark Week, it would be stupid not to do a shark, and so this week's animal is the cookie cutter shark. It is not the most normal shark around, it actually looks very different to what you would expect from a shark, with its weird teeth and weird body. As you could probably guess, the name cookie cutter comes from its sharp teeth and the way in which it feeds, by cutting cookie sized bits of flesh out of its prey. As this is a shark, it unsurprisingly lives in the ocean. They are most commonly found in the tropical regions between 20 degrees north and south. They have been seen off the coast of Brazil, Angola, Mauritius, Australia, Hawaii and other places, showing it is found worldwide within the tropics. The depths at which they are found depends on the time of day. At night they come nearer the surface to around 85 metres down, but during daylight sink down to 1 to 3 kilometres below the surface. This movement pattern is called dineural vertical migration, and can occur for a number of different reasons. Most of the time it is done to avoid predators or for hunting. Cookie cutter sharks are essentially parasites. They wait around for larger fish or marine mammals to go past them, and then proceed to latch onto them with their sharp teeth and cut out cookie sized chunks of flesh, hence the name. It can actually lure larger fish to it, as it possesses bioluminescence on its underside. It lights up and causes the areas of the shark that aren't illuminated to form the shape of small fish. This then attracts its prey for it to then latch onto. The shark doesn't actually kill its prey most of the time, just takes bits off of them. Many marine mammals have been found all over the world with chunks missing or scars that have all come from multiple attacks from various cookie cutter sharks. They do also prey on small squid and crustaceans that they will eat whole. Males reach sexual maturity at around 36 centimeters in length and females at 39. These sharks are oviviviparous, meaning that they produce and fertilize eggs like any other fish, but instead of laying them somewhere, they are carried around by the female in her uterus. The young survive off the yolk of the egg and are not connected to the mother despite being in her. The only thing the mother provides is gas exchange, but apart from this, they are essentially separate eggs like any other fish produces, just held by the mother. The sharks have a very long gestation period of well over a year, but this does mean when they hatch, they are fully developed and able to hunt, which gives them a better chance of survival. Cookie cutter shark teeth are some of the sharpest in the world. They are perfectly designed to be cookie cutters. The top jaw contains many small teeth, around 30 to 37, but the lower jaw contains one, well sort of one. The lower jaw contains far larger teeth, but they are all connected at the bottom to form essentially one big tooth. The top teeth attach to the skin of the prey, and then it uses the larger lower teeth as the cookie cutter, turning its body to allow the lower teeth to cut out the cookie sized circle of flesh. If the teeth break off, the shark will actually swallow them. It is thought to do this as they are a good source of calcium for the shark. Still pretty weird though. Weirder still if you remember that shark skeletons are made of cartilage and not bone. They use the calcium in a process called calcification, where the cartilage bones are strengthened with calcium. This can aid in diving to deep depths, or in case it's attacked. The shark possesses photophores that allow its bioluminescence. They are positioned on the skin and emit a green light to attract prey. The light can still be produced up to three hours after the shark dies. Being small and actively trying to attract larger predators does mean that they can get eaten by a wide range of things. From humans these sharks face few threats. During the day they are deep down in the ocean and are only threatened by fishing nets at night when they come nearer the surface, however they are usually small enough not to be caught by the nets. Their class is least concern, but due to being marine animals living in relatively deep ocean, it is hard to keep count of their population, but we have no reason to believe they are under threat for now. Be sure to catch the next episode of Shark Week 2019, in which Ben examines three of the weirdest prehistoric sharks. Also go and check out our mother's channel she has recently created, and today's video on how the world's food habits and diet may have to change if we want to continue living on this planet, and please subscribe if you enjoy it. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you'd like to see more from us.